it, I would say that yes, it is. Uh, it is somewhat noticeable for me, at least, that some of the areas of the book are kind of, you know, barren, because yes, they are focusing on two different lines of campaign here. But usually, I try to, you know, work with what little they have given me there to sort of embellish on it, right? And make and and make it more more palatable. We'll see. Uh, we're only in the, in the first week of exploration of the jungle. Right on, uh, on chapter four, I. You know, considering how large this is, I thought that maybe we, like, I don't know. Do you think this has like another ten sessions left in it? Like, oh, ten sessions. Um, it's so hard to to I, gauge. I, I, I know, like, given like the sandbox feel of it, but if there's whole sort of like this time crunch operating in the background, we are obviously working inexorably towards our goals, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. I, I just figure, you know, I, I didn't know whether we would have, like, I know our Summer of Fun campaign, which I think was pretty concrete and laid out in comparison to this, yeah. lasted like 13 weeks. So Yeah. You know, just, I, I, I imagine, as I said, it's very hard to say, but I imagine we, we might have something between seven to, like, 11 sessions of this. It's hard to say. Seven. But that would be my hmm. that would be my estimate. It, it depends very much on what you do. Right, of course. Uh, and we could just get TBK'd. Yeah, well, that you know that is certainly that that's over quick then. But uh, I mean, if if I mean taking interest in in uh, people and places and like engaging in conversation, that is certainly something that you know enriches the world and also, you know makes it more interesting and also less longer because then we're like we're interested in details and just glossing over things i'm a bit torn in that aspect i although i like to dig for details and explore like things and information about the world our party really basically our entire race is not built for overcoming xenophobic tendencies <laughs> it's it's uh, it's true the the dry race as a whole certainly isn't but you know you there are special considerations in your case that sort of make you right i weird. understand like our idiosyncratic nature the fact that we've been yeah. so separated and ostracized from drow society and we're the ones like half orcs and half elves and you know other evil people we're the ones who have to overcome and break the 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 shackles and perceptions we lead the freedom marches and what have you but i've <laughs> definitely felt myself particularly this episode i feel like with the session now i'm kind of like like I feel like torn in a sense it's it's a weird feeling hmm just uh, I, I don't... go ahead manica at times elinary is not taking the choices that are good that i as a person know uh, what would most likely give us the best results? Uh, she's she's just not that. I mean, she's she's too drow, I guess. I mean, uh, it That's... is it is certainly feasible, and that's the whole point of I mean, role playing like doing this is the whole one of the points is, of course, to allow your characters to sort of take a journey and you know take a character arc. So you start at a certain place, but you don't end at the same place. Or you change you, like new things. New concepts, new ideas, probably, and the the characters change with with the times. That's. I've definitely noticed that, Manikai. I don't have a problem with how you role playing the character. I I think it's great. I think it's a great devotion. And uh, it, but there's definitely moments where you say something, and I'm like, oh my god, this is this will not go well. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she is a faulty character. That's, I guess that's pretty important, right? You wouldn't want to have a perfect character, although she she thinks she... <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, but that's one of the faults, right? Right, right. Because if you don't recognize that you have faults, then you can't improve upon them. The, the, so you know, having flaws and failures like that can help drive roleplay, particularly in a situation where you'd otherwise feel overwhelmed and unsure how to play a character. Oh, yeah, I can just fall back on being a xenophobic, sort of selfish... Prima donna. Yeah, like... <laughs> you know, these, these Michelauds, they might be... They're great, and they're not really tribal, that's that's for certain. But, you know, 
it's more like you know there it's like finding a treasure trove and there's just this annoying thing that makes you unable to grasp and take it with you and, and as for me you know I, I guess it really does just fit into the whole messiah fantasy it's like these two races need to be at perfect peace and harm well not perfect peace and harmony but we need to make a peace treaty between them you want to know why because i'm never fucking coming back here <laughs> that's why <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. This is not home. They can have the fungal jungle. That's, you know, that's what I figured. Just like Rilla tells the alchemist straight out, I, look at my face. I, you guys can do whatever you want with this. This is your home. I don't want to be a part of your home. <laughs> you can have your home. I want my home. We can have mutual understanding and use each other <laughs> so that we can have our homes. But, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the alchemist just wants to give us a middle finger. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, you just want me to fucking attack Vathis, and then what's next? We're gonna fucking have all the Michaeloids march on Tarissi itself? <laughs> that would yeah. be great, yes, thank uh, you. Yeah. Get out of my face with that shit. God it's like, ah, it. uh, it's a great idea. Yeah, you totally came here to use me, you know. If he was just super sarcastic, like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll command them to march out. What, Michaeloids march to Vathis, attack them, kill them all. Huh? Come on, is that what you want? Like yeah, yeah, thank you, and they all go do it, and he's like, yeah, is that are you happy now? You know, I I, like, def yeah. I definitely I'm got the sense of being overwhelmed there. I I I feel as if that were the conveyed feeling, and we were a bit out of our debt. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, this is this is how we felt in Vathis for the past several we're, decades. We're right? we're not big fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for, you know. Literally, he's Tiny, a huge creature. <laughs> it's like, what? Who? What is that even? Like like a mound like... of like moss or something. He is. Are there also these things. Yeah. Apparently, he was the first Michaeloid. So you know, if he's lived for thousands of years, he's probably had the time to accumulate a few class levels. Yeah, the thing is, you know, yeah. In time, though, in time. <laughs> Using PC progression. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We have, we have, I mean, Elenary has no illusion. She's going to rule, well, what is to her mind, the world. And, and so, you know, I mean, in t that's this place too, in time. You know, maybe not directly, but rule it as in having the power to destroy it if she doesn't like it. And that's, you know, that's basically the same thing. And, and, you know, she knows that these people should probably just kill her now. That would probably, to them, be the best thing to do. The alchemist least, might think about like, this on multiple in occasions the, every in day. In the long run, like, it, that's also why she's sort of not being that... Like, she's never really honest, because if she were, she knows that they would just kill her now. And that's... <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah... I, I, I will I, be nice to you now. That's right. I have to lie. Here, but in I, time, right. I will come back and I will kill all of you and desecrate this land and take it all for myself. I, I'm not sure whether you should have went with you diplomacy know? so much as bluff, because if... It, I, I also have bluff now. <laughs> I would say your character is always <laughs> lying, so... You're equally good at it now, so... Equally? And intimidate as well. <laughs> oh, it might be useful. Oh, I do have a city with, like, 40 drow or whatever hell we are once we've left 60 something uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back to faster vault and we're gonna have nothing Sergeant the gonna be like, 60 swords of a 60 drow will descend upon you that's right well, by the time we emerge from the fungal jungle Sergeant Tarlin has already taken Vathis and yeah. um you were gone a long time Tarissia um, welcomes you <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Tarissian agent sent to ruin us oh yeah <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the infiltration went very uh, easily, I must say. You're they appointed me themselves and it's entered into the jungle. Oh. We did not uh, even need to send them there. Let's it's... collapse every entrance into the jungle and let the problem sort itself out. Very. And then, then, like, in 200 years, we'll return dressed in, like, mushroom armor. <laughs> <laughs> we Fight. have waited so long. <laughs> Fight Gorilla Wars. Yeah. Dressed up in like gnomish artifacts and stuff like that. 
<laughs> the ancient ruins have spoken to us. I wield the telescope of the gods. I don't even know like, what that is. In one of my eye sockets, there was like green slime coming out as I've transplanted. <laughs> Oh a weird slime creature in the... You have a clockwork dragon with I know. you. We, we've used vicissitude and, like, blended your body with plant matter. Yeah. Yep. I am the perfect being. Yeah. <laughs> it was metamorphosis. <laughs> the drow will suffer. Dark, you will all be uh, compliant. You will see the green dream as I do. The green dream? <laughs> sounds like yeah. some sort of, like... Cheesy, like B rated movie, or like sure. uh, a green dream, it's like, uh, it's just like a like boxing crowns. thing, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I think I will be off to bed. All I'm right, sleep. Uh, Grimith, if I watch that uh, that video you've posted, um, Fourth Throne of Night, would that be something I shouldn't watch? Of the what on your channel, you posted the Dark Frontier thing, a monologue. Oh, that's that's perfectly free for any of the player characters to listen to. All right. Yeah. I just want to know if that was something. Uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that is entirely on limits. There's a, like a text file that I I pasted as well as like a an MP3 if you don't like want to have the YouTube video player up. But uh, that is that is me exulting in everything I fantasized about doing to that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, Jonas, I, <laughs> yes, I enjoyed. Uh, I I read it. I didn't listen to it. I read it. Uh, I guess I had it as a document. Yes. Well. Whew. Well, off for tonight. Thanks for the session, guys. All right, mm -hmm. Jonas. I'll send you like seventy-nine kilobytes of notepad. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward It'll to that. Probably here for me at some point too. <laughs> Good heavens. What have I done? <laughs> the, the great scouting mission to try to get in contact with the bee. <laughs> <laughs> so if I send... <laughs> no, we have a week. Can I bribe one of my siblings to do this? Tristan knows she'd give it away. Actually, Tristan, there's a cute puppy inside there. If you could... Um... And it has candy. And it's oh. called in syrup. Well... Maybe she can tame one of the Michaeloid guardians. To, like, just... <laughs> at, at some point, it just seems yes, yes, like exceedingly yes. dangerous. I try to handle animal, <laughs> the leader of the Michaeloids. <laughs> I gave it treats and everything, but uh... I gave him like you know dog treats and we're like yes, yes you're good, yes you're a good alchemist, yes. <laughs> I pet his head. <laughs> you stroke like the moss covering. <laughs> yep. It's like oh, I don't even. This is strangely soothing. <laughs> it's like, I, I feel compelled to kill you, yet at the same time, I stay my hand for reasons only the Maker understands. But it is sorcery. Witch. I knew I should have killed you the moment I laid eyes on you. Like, wh why am I suddenly on my tummy? <laughs> <laughs> Rolling around on the floor. Uh. Play dead. <laughs> Excuse me, Drow, but I do not believe I intended to lick your face. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. I, it's very disturbing to me. Questions I didn't want to ask. Do my coins have tongues? <laughs> Find out this and more in the next session. Uh, questions to ask the sage. Ask the... <laughs> do you have a tongue? <laughs> what? A watch? <laughs> Mm, no, well, can you can you give me yours? I want to study. Well, you know, I think that I think the best victory I can take out of this is not that I'm the Messiah, but that I know what a telescope is in game. Very impressive. <laughs> that certainly impressed someone. Oh, yes. and he's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a thing, it's huh? thing, gnome thing. You're just bad that's right great. Now. <laughs> Speaking their language, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> It's not technology and such. She's a little uh, little 40k imperial style. You know, if it's not made by Drow, yeah, it, it's probably not as good. So yeah, I mean, probably should probably ignore it. Like just... knowing it, knowing it, having it could be useful just because we don't really have an alternative. We you know, don't it's like you'd rather have a broken the sword than a like a no sword, right? But, but you know, if we could have like the Drow version, that'd probably be a lot better. So, you know. In time, all this stuff. We, we will teach the people of our empire, our future empire, to make telescopes. Yes. <laughs> we'll use them to look at... Oh, wait. Hmm. Yeah. 
The stone. Yeah, we can look at this rock really, really what, closely. Uh, that ex indeed that raises the question. What did the telescope look at? Look at? It look you at know, the, the, you know, I'm pretty sure Gnome just fucking ants. built things to like jack off. Just like I <laughs> am an amateur thespian, just to fucking like jack off. Uh, I should <laughs> work, but uh, you know, I should work, but I procrastinate by building a telescope. There we go. <laughs> you you compensate a lot, don't you? I mean, look at this thing. Uh, it's huge. That's what did. I just built an airship, and it wasn't even asked of me by the king. Like, you live in a cave. Like, we can't even fly this thing. But, I, you know, blimps everywhere, and that's what they happen. P -p perhaps, well, perhaps the cave used to be open, you know? Oh. They build a ceiling. And uh, with that, I uh, take my leave. See you uh, right. later. Bye. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk later. Oh. Uh... I'm so fucking tired. Oh my god. Not as tired as I was last week, though. That is the end of a chapter. Chapter 4. We, uh... I think there was a lethargic start. Uh, we didn't have our shit together for whatever reason. I was recalcitrant and wanting to speak or interact or do things just to allow other folks the opportunity to convey their thoughts and feelings. I'm not sure how much of the game is uh, taking place between Jonas, Manakai, and myself. <laughs> With Tina as comic relief, uh, Dark Destiny Soul, and um, SMW playing, I don't know, extra roles? <sighs> That's, of course, the pessimistic look at things. But I am nothing if not honest with... <laughs> Who am I kidding? I lie to myself regularly. But I, I I try to keep myself on the level. And I have no problem expressing my thoughts and feelings uh, to a microphone on account of the fact that... Uh, what the fuck point do I have in lying to you people who view this? Um, sort of think about things here. Um, chapter 4, we, we did a lot of exploration... Uh, certainly there were many interesting things to find. In regards to progress made, like how I feel about overall progress towards our goals, I'm not sure how much. We certainly found things which were interesting, and we befriended a... a Zan um, to... You know, we saved his... It's... It's life. Gender identity is going to be assumed to be masculine on account of society proclaiming as much as much as the tabletop games and other media are really fighting against that and uh, presuming the feminine gender instead. I've really noticed that in like tabletop system books, they they really try to like hone in on that feminine gender. It's, it's neither here nor there. Um, Miku, I think his name was. I'm trying to remember that off the top of my head. Uh, Miku has, you know, a lot of potential to be corruptible as a companion, given his insatiable curiosity. Uh, perhaps I can teach him the ways of identifying nerve clusters and inserting needles into them and extracting information to satiate curiosity. Um... Miku is probably going to trust his instincts and remain loyal to his people and that he won't reveal uh, overly much information. He won't break any secrets. You know, uh, there's something that they apparently worship or, you know, they hold in such high esteem, uh, yet which they hide from us for their own inscrutable purposes. And there's no telling why. I don't even know how old Miku is. He said he was young among his kind. And, you know, I don't even know how old the Zan are. Or, you know, that those might be questions like how they might tell time and then extrapolating how aged they are based off of that distinction. We, I, I think it's fair to say that we could be dealing with a being in the alchemist who is uh, a thousand years old. Uh, particularly given, you know, or if, if not longer, uh, certainly the ancient Deep Gnome Empire is also incredibly old as well. Uh, centuries, millennia. I forget the exact terminology that Jonas used, but to that effect, yeah. 
if he was first among the Zan, there's no telling how long the Zan have been here. As a result, you know, if, if I'm trying to talk to this dude who's like thousands of years old, and, and that's why I shucked the whole idea of attempting deception in any way, shape, or form. You know, I have great bluff, and my diplomacy is, it is what it is. I think I have like a bonus of five. It's like three for class, and then one for my charisma bonus, and then one for the rank, yeah. Where's my bluff if I'm wearing the mask? It's amazing. But it's just the situation where he he was completely no-selling everything Elinary was saying. And uh, to that end, you know, I figure given how incredibly perceptive and how much smarter my character is than I am, uh, which is it's hard to play up to that. Uh, the sort of, uh, the, the insight and, uh, decisive wit the character would portray, which I simply lack. Um, you know, I've, to that end, I've just made extensive notes and tried to extract as much information as I can and just try to prepare myself, it's sort of like an arduous task every week. One which I relish, but which requires a lot of work. I try to make authentic roleplay experiences. <laughs> well try being the operative word you end up with absurd situations such times as me being the messiah and acting like a superhero off to the rush i couldn't think of anything to say uh, sometimes i just can't think of a way to express my feelings in character uh, even after all this like, practice and after all these years and i'd rather uh sort of summarize like hand wave that which is sort of like, and then this happened. It's convenient and helpful at times. Uh, but, you know, this is not the most serious game. We have a lot of comic relief take place. Uh, derailing happens considerably. <laughs> I would, uh, I, one of my, uh, you know, hopes is that uh, over the course of the games, we continue to see uh, Rain Kalar and Zen grow his characters and take a more active role uh, in matters beyond combat. I uh, certainly think that contributions from them vocally would enrich the overall game experience. Uh, as, as much as I enjoy being a melodramatic ham amateur thespian, uh, it would behoove the game, I think. And we certainly hear so little from Tina. I figure this is just due to, uh, well, an, uh, just an overall sort of like discomfort, unfamiliarity with like role playing stuff. And I still figure that comes from SMW as well. He, uh, well, he's been doing this for less than a year. So, you know, it. And many people, I believe, as I mentioned before, just simply aren't comfortable with this shit. Uh, we all get into tabletop games for our own reasons. Uh, some folks enjoy more of the old-school Dungeons & Dragons type feel, uh, which they got back to with a fourth edition of just, you know, combat encounters and treasure and the sort of adventure and exploration and getting past this morass of ethics and morality and intrigue. You know, there are people who enjoy that, and there are people who dislike that. Uh, certainly, though, I, I think it, it does help the party that we have diverse people. For example, if there were five Grimmiths, or five Manakais, or even two of us, our personalities would clash and we would get little done. Uh, our characters, we made them and they end up being dominant members of the social aspect because of how we made them. Obviously, someone who is not so... Um, obviously, someone whose character doesn't bend that way. That's not the proper phrase for it, but obviously someone whose character isn't built for that, you know, just doesn't want to do that. It'd be like how I didn't use Thorak to engage in crazy-ass diplomacy shit. I, whenever we got into those situations, I just used them to cut to the heart of the matter. And, uh, with Rillanid, I have, 
I have the flexibility to go with that flowery thing, you know, overly verbose, you know, contort words, play with them, uh, make them my bitch. And I'm like talking with my eyes closed. This is great. Why do I even have my monitor on? I don't need my monitor on. Whatever. Um, train of thought. Focus, Grimoth. And at the same time, I, I figure my character is intelligent enough and insightful enough about himself and his weaknesses, as well as, like, this overarching goal of what he wants and what he's willing to sacrifice to get what he wants. You know, he was the first of the, all the children of House Vithari, never the fact of mind that we were quintuplets, so there's practically no time between that. Uh, but just this whole sort of uh, feeling that he has this mandate, this pressure to ensure the success of his family, which was, you know, bound by his mother. They had this inauspicious, ominous birth, which they were, you know, all born at the same time for inscrutable, I use that word again, inscrutable purposes. And they've been so ostracized, so separated uh, from drow society at large, uh, particularly with their exile, uh, you know, just just uh, completely separated from the grand city of Tarissia to this fucking fortress shanty town that they've had the opportunity to develop all these idiosyncrasies. And that plays in real life as well. Um, the more time you spend socially with other people, the more likely you are to pick up on their social patterns. Um, social mimicking. I'm not a sociologist, despite a sociology class or two. Uh, that does not train me to be a professional. I don't have an educated opinion on the matter. Uh, similarly, the uh, being isolated and being alone, for example, like I am, <laughs> that leads you to develop this sort of life attitude and these perceptions and thoughts which deviate from what's accepted around you. I think my character is intelligent and formed enough, despite what his morality uh, might get in the way, you know, to, uh, to realize his goal, realize how much he's willing to sacrifice to achieve that goal, and then do it. It would be like how um, there are orders and organizations, and this has existed throughout Dungeons and Dragons, where uh, you know lawful good, lawful neutral, and lawful evil work together in the name of preserving law. They all just go about achieving their methods in different ways. And suddenly, the alignment system is but a spin on the subject. You know, it's it's a summary of the morality outlook. But it's up to you to determine the, well, I mean, your goals are your goals. Your ambitions are your ambitions. And the alignment can shade that, but really it helps to serve, like, like what are you willing to do to achieve what you want? You know, like, what is a lawful good individual? What is a paladin of Torog willing to do to achieve his desires? What is a neutral good druid willing to do to protect his forest versus a neutral evil druid. You know, that distinction. Uh, in that instance, you know, my character has this goal of seeing his family's ascendancy so that it is the top, you know, it's the most supreme. It is the head of all of the drow empire. It is the absolute kingpin, the ruler of everything. Hopes and dreams of sparking this massive resolution, revolution, which would be more like a chaotic thing, right? Like a chaotic good approach, or like a being a revolutionary. You know, and that's an angle I, I tried to play at to appeal to Ivy, uh, given how I think her attitude is. Uh, just this whole aspect of bringing complete revolution overthrowing the current hierarchy, exacting vengeance upon all of the years of mistreatment, um, separation, shunning, realizing and achieving our destiny, uh, making it so that mother's life was worthwhile and meaningful, that we don't disappoint her. 
You know, those are the goals. The, the ultimate goal is completely family-driven. House Vitharia is number one fucking period. You know, not so much the world. Just House Vitharia wins over the drow. And what my character is willing to do to achieve that. And, uh, you know, with the evil uh, moniker there, he, he's willing to do whatever it fucking takes. The lawful approach ends up uh, having him, you know, I, I have the whole lawful mindset to bind him to this code of goals that he wants to achieve. And he has his own sense about how things should work. Uh, his own personal code of things that he follows that, you know, he sort of formulated himself due to the massive family, sep you know, the separation from society. And if that hadn't existed, if, you know, his birth weren't deemed as some great or horrific event, he probably would have ended up, you know, like so many of his peers have. But he's gone this way, uh, just due to the differences in his environment. Sort of like a nature versus nurture type of angle there. Again, not a sociologist, don't have an educated opinion of the matter. It's just something to bring up. It's possible that, you know, he might not have ended up being this introspective way, but being on the outside looking in, it's easy to see the weaknesses of his people and as a result, attempt to refine that. The xenophobia, the mistrust, the, the superiority complex, yeah, sure, that's all fine and well, but where has that gotten the drow race? Obviously, we haven't conquered our lessers. We spend so much time with infighting and squabbling amongst ourselves that really we can't come to even dominate an entire region, let alone exact vengeance upon the surface elves for what they did. It's, you know, it feels like chaotic stupid instead of chaotic evil, which... Arguably, chaotic evil is actually chaotic stupid. <laughs> you know, this whole sort of sense, and I think that reflects on my personal real-life attitudes. I think I've wrote this before, and like the notepad, of how anathematic I find chaos to be, and just sort of like this icy law and order and control, you know, fantasizing about a totalitarian regime, right? that needs to be employed to ensure function because such a, a government or a society clearly is dysfunctional uh, whenever it exists as the drow society does. You need to have an establishment where you can actually put trust and loyalty and, and faith in the people, at least with like this confined sense of you know, some sense of structure! Otherwise, it would be too damn tiring and taxing to play every single angle. You'd never get anything done. <laughs> At least how much I feel, you know, even if my character is like this Seneschal, Vizier, you know, Mintat, you know, 18 intelligence motherfucker who, you know, studies culture and lore and heritage and history to totally understand his enemies so that he can conquer them? It's fucking... That takes too much effort, man. I don't want to spend the next 800 years of my life fucking with that shit. I got things to do. You know, once his lofty goal of family ascension has been achieved, uh, if that is ever achieved within the campaign... Uh, or if he ever feels it's a sheep, then all bets are off. And it's possible that events within the game could change his attitude towards those goals, where he stops focusing on that so much and maybe starts gearing towards something else. I don't think it's out of the realm of the possibility for my character to stop being evil. <laughs> my character is probably the most... Well, I say that... Trislin might end up being more neutral uh, than anyone else, if only because, you know, 
she's selfish and maybe, you know, self-centered, but, you know, many humans who have the neutral alignment, or humanoids in general, they're that way, as depicted within the game. I certainly feel that my character, though, is incredibly constructive, and, you know, with his incredible knowledge of things and his desire to learn about people... It's not that he wants peace for the sake of peace. He, he doesn't want, you know, the Zan and the Skisral to be best buds forever just for the sole purpose of them being best buds forever. It's the fact that we want to make some use out of this fungal jungle, have some semblance of stability at our backs. Because we're going to delve into that massive gaping hole extending 2,000 plus feet beneath the upper Hazeth here. We're going to be down there. We do not have the time or the energy or the effort. We're not going to be able to instantaneously teleport back up to our realm. And, yeah, sure, they probably don't have any interest outside the fungal jungle. And we could probably lead them to their own devices. But I want to make use out of the resources we could attain in there. Whether it's, I believe someone mentioned a cave of her, uh, uh, a cave of aurochs earlier. Like a, a, a cave? A herd of aurochs. You know, the basically like the cave buffalo. The other dark buffalo. Or, you know, the ancient ruins. Whether they hold incredible gnome secrets we could employ to serve our own purposes or the whole idea of making a future kingdom more beneficial through ch trade and mutual agreement you know that's all centered in the hope that selfish reasons you know i do this hobby for selfish reasons and not just tabletop but like this whole recording thing there's selfish reasons i i get off on on helping other people, on entertaining others, on improving their lives. That's selfish. It achieves good ends. It's not like people who watch me and enjoy my videos complain about the fact that I like to do that. It only helps to facilitate the broad thing, like, you know, a Coke dealer enjoying dealing Coke, right? <laughs> But it's the same, it's the same idea. My character is motivated by selfish reasons. He wants to fucking win! He wants his family to win. He sees what he does as a way to help his family win. And I bring this all up if only because it's just, it creates this interesting conversation and dialogue in my head where, you know, I question the decisions that my character makes through me, or that I'm making through my character, and I'm going, is that really played it? And, you know, I reevaluate my character and the extensive notes I've made about it, both digitally, and I've jotted down some stuff on paper, and sort of in my head, whenever I get some spare time and I think about the crap. I, know I consider so many things and permutations and possibilities, you know, you know, we're still in the baby levels, still in infancy. I'm still sculpting my character's personality. I'm trying to wrap my mind around the fact that my character is 129 years old. You know, he's, he's... He's around five times older than I am. His experiences in life and what he's done in such an alien atmosphere at such an advanced age completely baffled me. And I'm left reeling and attempting to establish uh, who he is in some form of way. And, of course, you could not worry about that. But given the intrigue type of situations, which Jonas loves, uh, Manakai likes to play in those situations, and obviously I do too, it, it, it behooves me to invest in why. Um, establishing his goals and figuring them out and then learning why he wants to do what he wants to do. So the whole Messiah thing, <laughs> as it's now been dang gold, saving Miku, that's selfish. Uh, if there were nothing to gain from that, no. Unless my character were feeling exceptionally benevolent or magnanimous, uh, putting himself at incredible risk is not something he enjoys on a daily basis. But the opportunity to, you know, hearing someone screaming for help, 
And then seizing upon that as a sort of gateway, particularly when it's one of the Xan. Because, you know, Jonas, through information made clear to me, Xan aren't big fans of the drow for reasons which were made clear in the session. Harvesting, torture, dissection, alchemical reagents, shit like that. Really less on the torture and more on the harvesting. And we obviously needed our way in. I question whether we could have even gotten our way in through the main gate um, without Miku. We probably could have attempted a diplomacy thing. Maybe we could have snuck past the guards. Uh, snuck into that massive... This is something worthy of being called a city. Not Fastervolt. Fastervolt's a little pissant village. This is something which is worthy of being called a city. Holy shit! Thousands of these Xan, each of whom can telepathically communicate with each other. How the hell could we fight a foe like that? Especially if, you know, like their their ancients are hundreds if not thousands of years old. Who have seen perhaps every tactical permutation that well, I could devise in right? There's no way in hell I could do such a thing. I mean, I don't want to even want to. Selfish reason again here. What the fuck? Are, are, what are we going to do with the fungal jungle? What are we going to do? Are we going to colonize it? Uh, maybe there's a place we could build a fortress or supply cache or some sort of supply outpost for trading and guarding purposes. Uh, an embassy of sorts to make sure we maintain... Um, amicable relations with the two. Uh, Skisral, of course, being the others as well as the Zan. You know, that might be a possibility in the cards, particularly if we, you know, can build it on like an ancient ruin site somewhere. There might be some possibility there. Um, I mean, it, uh, this place is so alien and inhospitable and outright dangerous. There's so much, many other places we can expand to that will just be fine. You know, being here and living here in the fungal jungle and raising this place to the ground and fighting these bastards, these Zan and Skisral, does not help me get to Teresia faster. How the hell... There's no possible way we could beat the Zan. Period. None. Absolutely none. I, they're, they're too huge. Like, uh, There's no fucking way. I don't think we could take the Alchemist on. We could probably take a handful of guards. There's no way we could handle any of those individual name characters, I feel. It, it's just too much of it. It's too foreboding. Similarly, there's no way in hell I think we'd be able to outright kill the Skisrol. Possibly, given enough power and ancient artifacts we found, and maybe getting on friendlier terms with the Zan and having them assist us with this goal, we could assault them, but I don't think that's happening either. I don't want to take their egg sack and hold it hostage or kill their young. That's like the situation where you're just baiting the, the enemy to want to murder you. And well, all they need is that one moment. Just one moment. Just one chance where control slips. And then you're fucked. Right? I don't want that to happen. <laughs> That's another problem with like establishing these uh, dot, you know, relationships purely by intimidation or just pure force. You're you're not establishing any sort of like dependable situation for if the system fails. And um, given history, the system will fail at some point. You will experience weakness. There's going to be an event or series of events which completely shake your life despite your best efforts. And you need to weather that storm 
you need to have some form of credibility other than I'm stronger than you to weather that storm. You know, that's that's the attitude that uh, my character works off of, and that's, you know, that's an extension of my feelings. There are numerous differences between myself and my character, but I try to share similarities so that I'm not playing someone who's completely alien. You know, even Thorak had his similarities between, uh, between him, the character, and me. A Trusair, uh, Vagnar Grimbeard, um, Luther Volmar, who was in that 13th Age single so shot session for Extra Life 2013. I don't really want to talk about that. I, I have some problems with Extra Life, which is immaterial to this video. Uh, I'm leaning so far back from my desk now, my microphone, just like propped up here, laid back in the chair, against the entertainment cabinet. It's all good. The blue yeti can completely pick up my every whim, even if I were to talk to you downstairs in my kitchen. I can even walk around my room. Ugh. How long have I been babbling? Holy shit. Like, what, 30 minutes? That's nothing new. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else I wanted to discuss? Uh... I'm gonna have a busy week of downtime. Definitely. Um... Probably gonna be filled with fortitude saves every single day. <laughs> I didn't make use uh, much of my spells in this session, uh, except for the grease, except for the grease. Um, the grease which may very well have saved the Michaeloid, and uh, grease of myself, because I had no idea whether it was going to be grabbed. Apparently that weird thing um, got very unlucky in grabbing Ivy. I don't know what I would have done done. I wouldn't have thrown away my character's life for Ivy, but considering how she was a, she's a useful asset I've been working on, <laughs> didn't want to lose her. I would have tried to cast Grease on her if she had been grabbed. And um, that would have probably gone poor because Zvirf Neblin has spell resistance. And I could not automatically bypass that. I'd have to roll a caster level check. Normally, you can only uh, suppress spell resistance with a standard action. Our characters have been given some freedom with each other, courtesy of the bond we have that our mother established at the behest of Agares. The information revealed uh, to Manakai's character, uh, then revealed to us, Certainly interesting. I was interested in, like, delving into, like, the nursery caverns from, like, an academic standpoint. Just to, you know, obviously learn more about their people. You know, so that we could develop the power to destroy or manipulate them in the future. You know, you need to truly understand your enemy for that to happen. But that's not a situation which can occur now. We just... We're too fucking different. Not, we're, we're really different, and we're so far apart. I don't think a week is such a great idea, uh, in retrospect. Maybe, like, three days. I might present that argument uh, to the group I am. Maybe not a week. Maybe three days. We kind of do want to do stuff. How much could we really achieve in a week of just incessant coughing and hacking of rainbow-colored phlegm? You know... I don't know. There's a lot of potential opportunity to be had. And I'm not in any rush to clear out the fungal jungle because of how much opportunity, you know, the ruins could be and how much we could discover. The simple fun and pleasure of exploring the campaign. You know, just because we're evil doesn't mean we can't have fun exploring, right? Sure, we have, like, this goal in mind of things we want to achieve. 
and this campaign perhaps with its kingdom making bent is uh tilted towards um tilted towards not um not investing so much time exploring but you know I want to fucking like I'm not saying I want to visit every single hex but I would like to poke my head around you know, not for like a, just a, for experience or for magic. I have the sheer pleasure of just looking around the world and seeing what it's got in it. And you know, there's puzzles to be solved or figured out, or encounters to be had, combat or none. You just fucking figure it out because it's fun. It's stuff I want to do. It's why I'm playing the game. Ah, oh. uh, skis roll. We should have killed Skethic and Azrak. Should have fucking killed him. That would have gotten us in the door. They might very well be tr distrustful of us, too. Just like these Xan are. After all, Drow, you know, just not the nicest people. They, we might probably start a better relations with them just because we probably don't harvest them for alchemical reagents. No, we're too tempted to treat them as pets, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. I have concerns. Um, not the best tabletop game I've ever played in. Uh, we're st we're still a work in progress. We're still in development. Uh, it remains to be seen. Um, I would like to see uh, greater opportunities for uh, Rain Rain Kalar's character. Uh, no, excuse me, for Rain Kalar and for Zen and for Trislin to shine. Um, you know, in all aspects, I would like to see greater focus and uh, opportunity provided to them. And I would like to see them, uh, maybe if it's not even their strong suit, uh, look for those opportunities. Uh, just so that they're there. I think there was an improvement. I, uh, for the most part, but, you know, like I said, it, it's a work in progress. It's not perfect. There's still uh, much that could be done within the next 7 to 11 sessions, as Jonas said. Oh, boy. I'm about to fall asleep here in my chair. Um, well, again, uh, character sheet is uh, available on Dropbox. I've linked to it before, and you can take a look at it. it might not be the super immediately updated present version. I will probably, probably transfer the PDF I've got now on my computer to the internet at some point. But it's not the most current, I'd, I'd say. Just because something might change during the downtime. I, I think it'd be pretty good for you to get, you know, if you wanted to get a handle... Uh, obviously the document which uh, has presented me now with a boon of Agares, giving me a hero point to use uh, whenever I so wish, that's a thing. And um, if you want to listen to me or read me torturing some fucking poor dwarf, <laughs> that is certainly within the cards too. I am... Uh, very knowledgeable about such matters. Oh, yes. Totally. Pressure points and just right where you can stick those long, thin copper needles right in those nerve clusters to completely paralyze your opponent. Yet, they remain completely conscious and utterly aware of their surroundings. Perhaps even hyper-acute so that you can harvest the magical energies, uh sort of writhing around them, and then perform the incantation of reaping. Not on the gosh. Uh, that's all I got, folks. Hope you all enjoyed the session and the rambling. If you're still listening, and you didn't have this playing in the background, so you were attentive for whatever crazy reason, good job by you. And I'm out! Until... Well, whenever I fucking decide to come back in, the doctor...
is out.